Hello, thank you for joining me once again. My name is Femi Fenojo, your host on Paranata Teaching uh, Channel. Um, it is important for me to do something a little bit different, a little bit special this week. That's because I need to suspend the current teaching plan that I'm going through because there's an urgent topic I need to deal with. You may be aware that some people have brought a, a teaching that says that the rapture is going to happen on the 23rd of September 2017, which is this coming Saturday. And I feel that there's an urgent need for me to stop and deal with that topic, which means that I will have to bring forward some of the teaching that I'll be touching later, albeit just touching on them. So I'm going to suspend that and this week by the grace of God, every single day we are going to take this issue and count down to the 23rd of September 2017. What is this prophecy all about? Is there any truth in it? Is it biblical prophecy? What lesson can we learn from this and other incidents just like this? So I hope you will be able to join me every single day counting down to this day and seeing what the scripture have to say about prophecy like this and what we can learn by the grace of God. I need to apologize. I will suspect that a few number of this teaching will be a bit longer than I would want them to be, but I think this is absolutely necessary. I hope you will be able to join me. Praise God. I will start this discussion by simply stating the case with respect to the 23rd of September 2017. The 23rd of September 2017 is going to be a Saturday. And that will be about a week from the time that I'm doing this recording. So what is the case what is the point of discussion what is the point of dissension what is the point of assertion with respect to this case what is the issue with respect to the 23rd of september that demand that i break the flow of what i've been trying to do and attend to this as a matter of urgency. Let's state that clearly and let's state it simply. There is a teaching, a very loud teaching, a very imposing, intimidating teaching, sometimes very loud teaching that says that on the 23rd of September 2017, that is about a week from today, no, that's a week from the time that I'm doing this discussion. In other words, by the time you are hearing this, it will be less than a week when I'm showing you this, that they are telling us that on the 23rd of September 2017, the church will be raptured. What we have been told, what we have been asked to believe is that the rapture will take place in less than a week. And this teaching is not peripheral. This teaching is all over the social media and it's not just being taught by every dick and harry even though every dick and harry are teaching it but i've listened to a few number of teaching from ministers pastors some of them internationally known ministers who have given credence to this teaching that the rapture is going to take place on the 23rd of September 2017. And they claim that the authority that they speak from 
is biblical. And as such, that any soul that not, does not heed their voice, that does not heed their prophecy, that any soul that disregard or that even dare to raise a question against this assertion and insertion, they claim that such soul will be damned. And that is the case. And that's the case I want to deal with in this video. I, I want to make it clear that even though I am praying and hoping that this case will be challenged, that this case will be shown not to be true, that is not really my first intention. That is not really the primary reason for this video. Yes, I'm believing God that many people will see the truth and we know that this movement is false. But my primary intention really is to let us see how easy it is for people to be deceived. Anybody can be deceived. The Bible says that we should take heed. We should guard our heart with all diligence. The Bible says. Okay. It is easy for people to be deceived. I've seen pastors, ministers, I've had them, not I've had them, seen them on videos, on social media, that should know better. I've seen them propagate this false teaching. So my primary purpose is for me and for you to realize how easy it is for people to be deceived. And also to see the evil and the danger of what this type of deception can do to people, to family, to their relationship, to churches and to the souls of the unbelievers. I've witnessed this firsthand. By the authority of the word, primarily, and also as a matter of experience, I've seen life that has been touched by this type of teaching. People that have gone out of biblical revelation, that has added other things to what the Bible simply re revealed, all in the name of evidences people that have gone outside the scripture to look for evidences here and there and we'll be looking at some of these things as we move on and then trying to impose that evidence to say that this is what the bible says so i'm believing god that as we go ahead we'll see how dangerous this issue can be let me say this clearly. Obviously, you will have picked in between the line that I believe that this type of teaching, the Lord Jesus warned us against it. But I'll tell you something. 23rd of September 2017 will come and it will go and the rapture will not take place on that day. 23rd of September 2017 will come and it will go and the rapture will not take place on that day. The rapture can take place on any other day but it will not take place on that day. Somebody said how am I sure that that is true? How am I sure that it will not take place? Has God spoken to me? Has God given me a vision? I don't need a vision. I don't need another vision. I don't need another dream. I have the word of God. You have the word of God. Obviously, the people that claim this revelation, they... 
Often times we talk about God giving them a vision, God giving them a dream, and also they appeal to the Word of God. And they interpret the Word of God in a way that suits what they claim. So, how am I different? It's my interpretation against the interpretation you write. Because one of the things I've realized is this, that you can throw scripture at people that do this. That brings me to the second thing I'm going to say. You can throw scripture and they throw it back. It's your interpretation against their interpretation. But that brings me to the second point I'm going to say. Listen, you don't have to agree with me. But when 23rd of September comes and goes, and 24th of September comes, you will know, you will agree that 23rd of September, the rapture didn't take place. But that brings me to the second point that I'm going to tell you. Number one, that 23rd of September will come and go and the rapture will not take place. The great tribulation will not be triggered. But there's the another thing I will tell you that most, don't let me say most, that many of the people that peddle these lies, that many of the people that propagate this false teaching, they will not repent. Some of them will. Some of them will see the foolishness of going against the scripture. But many will not repent. Particularly, the people at the forefront, the vanguard, the people at the front, forefront of this teaching, will not repent. I want them to repent. I pray that they repent. But the revelation of the scripture and that of history, and I'm going to play you clips, and you will know the reason why I'm saying this, is that these people, and you will see this will happen. I mean, you will expect that if somebody have given this type of teaching, and if it was proven to be false, you will expect that they will go on the, multi, on the social media and they will publicly admit that they were wrong. And they will ask for forgiveness from God <coughs> and from the church. And they will take time to be discipled, to learn where they went from. But history teaches us that this kind of people don't really learn from history. Instead, they metamorphosized. <laughs> that's what tends to happen. So, that's the second thing I'm going to say, that <coughs> you will say that 23rd of September will come and go, there won't be any prof there won't be any rapture. But these teachers, these false teachers, will not repent. They will bring forth they will bring forth reason to justify. Once again, they will manipulate. Some of them will pull down one or two things they've written on their website. Some of them have been careful not to totally box themselves in, and I will talk about that in a second. They will rule out. And oftentimes, because they don't repent, they will only go on to a bigger life. They will only propagate a more sinister, a more evil lies. Somebody said, how do you know this? I know this because history shows us that this is what happens. And more importantly, the Bible tells us that this is what is going to happen. I don't need a dream. If God gives me a dream, praise the Lord, but it's not about my dream. I don't need a vision. If God gives me a vision, praise the Lord, I believe in dreams, I believe in vision. But the word of God is not subject to my dreams. The word of God is not subject to my visions. And it's not subject to anybody's dream or anybody's vision. The word of God, the revelation of the word of God is not subject to anybody's research. Okay? Now we have statistics. 
Now we have internet. Now we have all these tools. We don't need the Holy Spirit, do we? We don't need God. We can figure it out ourselves. We can draw the graph. We can draw the diagram. We can do research. And then we can make the word of God say whatever we want it to say. It doesn't work that way. So, it's not because I'm a prophet, I am not. Neither am I the son of a prophet, I am not. It's just because it is clear in the word of God. In Matthew chapter 24, the apostle came to the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, I will read. And when he, the Lord Jesus, sat upon Mount Olives, the disciple came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall this thing be? And when sh and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now, I'm not doing an exegesis on this. But I just want us to say something that the Lord Jesus Christ said clearly, which gives me the boldness to tell you what I've just said. The Lord Jesus, they ask him, <coughs> tell us when shall these things be? What things? The end of the world. They ask the Lord Jesus, what shall be the sign of your coming? What shall be the sign of the end of the world? And the Lord Jesus Christ gave them a lot of things. But you know, one of the things that is quite fascinating is that four times, in this chapter, he warned them about false prophecy and about false prophets. Verse 4 And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. I believe that there's a lot of deceit in this teaching. Many are into it honestly. But I also realized that some have been so deluded and deceived, particularly some of those people that are at the forefront of this teaching. Some of them are so deluded that they cannot see the truth. And it will take the grace and the power of God to be able to break that power. Unfortunately, they are leading many honest people in the false part. Having said that, Every single one of us, me included, we are responsible for what we believe. We cannot blame anybody else. We have to hold ourselves responsible for what we believe. The Bible says that you have the Spirit and that Spirit will show you, will guide you into all truth. If you are honestly open, if I am honestly open to the truth, we will be guided into all truth. God will correct us. He will instruct us. So ultimately, we are responsible for, the, for what we open our heart to receive. Now, every man and woman that bring up a false teaching will be judged. If I bring forth a false teaching, I will be judged. You will be judged if you bring forth a false teaching. But also, if you receive it without challenging it, without searching the scripture whether those things are true, then you also will be held accountable. You see, this area, people, you know, seemingly digging into things and bringing things out, you know, new revelation, new findings, and that has never been revealed to anybody else. And we, we've, you know, we find that there's another evidence that, you know, a lot of these things appeal to our flesh. A lot of the people in the forefront that are propagating this teaching ultimately is because of fame and fortune that drives them. That they may not admit this. Now, I don't know and I hope and I'm asking if you have not that you listen to my teaching on false prophets. The evil of false prophets. Because in that teaching, I went a little bit deeper. And this is exactly what we are seeing in our days. Oftentimes, they are driven by fame 
and they are driven by fortune. And it is difficult for them to admit, but by the special grace of God that they are wrong. So the Lord Jesus said in verse 4, remember, I'm in Matthew chapter 24. And I'm saying that when the disciples asked the Lord Jesus Christ, what shall be the sign of thy coming? He gave them many signs. One of this, one of that, one of this, one of that. But four times he warned about false prophets and false prophecy and the evil of this false prophecy. Verse 4 again, And Jesus said unto them, Take heed, be careful. Don't open your heart, please, to every dick and hairy doctrine, no matter who teaches it. Paul taught the Berean church. They went back. You know, some of these things are exciting. You know, scientific. Oh, we have many of these signs. Somebody would say, you know, my list is five times your own list. The list of my evidence. And what are these evidences? You know, the distance of something to something, the direction something is going, the alignment of something. <laughs> the age of somebody from here to there. And then they begin to twist the scripture to fit into this. Take heed. Don't open your heart. A lot of people are honest. They've been deceived by teachers they trust in. But unfortunately, if you keep going in that direction, there can be a demonic influence. And a spirit of Jezebel, the Bible says, seduces. And, and hopefully we'll get there. The Bible says, this spirit seduces my servant. Take their heart away from God. Now, I'm not saying that everybody involved in this, most people involved, most people involved in this are honest. They're looking for truth, but they are honestly deceived. But if you continue in that path, you don't have to agree with me, but I'm praying that when 23rd of September comes and goes, you will look back and say, you know what, I was foolish to believe that. And you wouldn't say, whatever, we just move on to the next thing. It's like a fix, isn't it? People have to have their next fix. They are intoxicated. People are addicted to things that tickle. I'm, I'm going to read to things that tickle their hairs, that answer to their, that boost their ego. You know, I found that. I see people say, I've, I've found that before. Uh, Verse 11, verse 4 again, and Jesus answered, them, answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man, doesn't matter what that man names go by, doesn't matter whether it is me, doesn't matter whether it is a bishop, a pope, a pastor, an evangelist, so called, it doesn't matter. No man, take heed that no man deceive you. And understand that when people want to deceive you, they come with sweet tongues. Verse 11. And many false prophets. <coughs> the Bible didn't say few. The Bible says many false prophets. Many. In these last days, there will be false prophecy coming from any angle. There will be a convergence of false falsehood. M Many falsehood in, in 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 years past. There one here, one there. There will be many of them coming in. Many, many false prophets shall rise again and deceive many. Don't be among the many false prophets, and don't be among the many that are deceived. That's the Lord Jesus talking. Many false prophets, they will have their charts. They will have their evidences. They will have their YouTubes. I have YouTubes channel. They will have their Facebooks. They will have their books. But that doesn't make them right. The Bible says many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many.
Let's move on. Verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. And shall show great signs and great wonders. This false prophet, they will be very articulate. They will be appealing. They will have their points, their charts. They will show great signs and wonders. When you listen to them, they will be very impressive. The Bible says that for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And I see Christians being deceived into these teachings. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you, like I said, I'll play clips. And, you know, the pastors, I've not listened to too many, but I've listened to a few. The pastors, some of these pastors have ministries. Some of them have international ministry. You know, when I listen to them, some of them are flirting. It's like they are flirting. You know, when somebody flirts with a woman, you know, I really don't want to go into bed with her. I'm just flirting. The Bible says, the Lord Jesus said that if you look with a man, at a woman or at a man, it goes both ways. And you have impure thought in your heart. You've not gone to bed with them, but you're flirting. The Bible says you've committed adultery. I see a lot of these ministers flirting with this type of thing. They are trying to say it, but they didn't say it. <laughs> Be careful. The Bible says, For there shall arise false prophets and false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The last one. Wherefore, if they shall say to you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber, believe it not. People, if they tell you that the secret is in the const const constellation, that the secret is in the pyramid, the secret is in the dates and in the in the in the calculations, don't listen to them. Believe it not. Don't go there. Okay? Don't go there. Second Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 to 4. Paul was charging Timothy. He said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Don't preach planets and don't preach constellations. Don't preach pyramids. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reproof, rebook, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, and this is the time. The time has come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Who is preaching holiness? No. We want to preach the stars, the stars. Who is preaching righteousness? No. Who wants to preach holiness and righteousness when we can preach pyramids? When we can preach statistics. The Bible says for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They will say you are judging them. They will say no, it's all about the heart. They will say I'm not perfect, I know that. But after their own loss, they shall heap to themselves teachers. They are heap of teachers. And people flock to them. I mean, they don't need, nowadays you, you, don't, you don't even need a building, you don't need a venue now, you just need a channel on YouTube, <coughs> a channel on, on Facebook. Teachers. The Bible says they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. People that will tell them what they want to hear. Listen, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. You know, you may say that, and so what? No, no, no. You don't understand. It's not just about the false teaching. It's about what they take people's attention and focus 
and affection from is the evil of this teaching. Is the evil of this teaching. Is the spirit of Jezebel that seduces the heart of the people of God away from the Lord Jesus Christ, away from the focus of the end time and engage them in fables. So these are some of the things we are going to be dealing with. I will stop here. This is if you if you feel if you will want. This is the this is the submission. This is the issue that we'll be dealing with. The rapture will take place. The great tribulation will happen, just as the scripture says it will happen. But don't allow these people to make the to model the water. Don't allow these people to model the water. To desensitize the heart and the soul of men from that which is necessary. One thing is needful. The Lord Jesus told Martha. He said, you are too distracted with too many things. You know, Mary had to make that decision to focus away from every. Do you think that Mary was not tempted to run around like Martha? Martha was busy. You understand? She was trying to cook for Jesus. She was trying to count the star for Jesus. She was trying to set the alignment for Jesus. She was trying to look at the pyramid for Jesus. The Lord Jesus said, stop it. Stop it. One thing is needful, sit at the feet of the master. Mary sat, the Bible says, at the feet of the master to hear his word. Why? Why all this distraction? Why? Why all this restlessness? Why? What do you want to gain from it? The Lord Jesus told Martha, Martha, you are too distracted, you are too combat. Only one thing is needful. And Mary has found it. She sat at the feet of Jesus to hear his word. And that is what the Lord is calling you and I to. And I'm praying and believing God that we will listen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me today. And I hope and I pray that you join me next time. God bless you. Bye.